Hello everyone. So, I haven't been fishing the last few days. Uh, yeah, I screwed my wrist up. Um, yeah, it was like Friday. I was hiking. And I was going like over these fallen down trees. And I went through this one. Stepped up onto it, went to step down with my left foot, landed right into a crevice, and rolled my ankle pretty freaking bad. I hit it, and then went down to catch myself on the tree that I just went over, my left hand, and it completely went, like, worse than that. Like, it popped and everything. Not really that bad. It hurt, but it wasn't that bad. But Saturday I woke up and it was swollen like a mother. And could barely move it. Sunday, it wasn't too bad, I guess. It was better. It was still swollen. And, yeah. Still hurt. And then today... Woke up, it's a lot less swollen, and I can move it. It hurts. It's not bad. But, uh, so I figured ah, I'd go fishing today. Ten minutes, a few casts, and it just sucked. So, yeah, gave up on that real quick. But, I figured I need to do this anyway. I was going to do this a long time ago and uh, do the second part of the pitching tips video because I don't need my left wrist for that. Uh, I don't know what that is. I don't know. Even if you can hear it, it's a mower or what the heck's going on? It sounds crazy. But, uh, yeah, so I figured I would do the second parts of the pitching video for you if you did not watch the first one you need to go watch the first one that's for sure first one I go over the line the rod the reel everything and why my favorite uh, flipping pitching baits that I love to use and all that why some little tips in there too um, but this one's all going to be the mechanics and setting everything up and how to do it the most effective way. So let's get on to it. I'm going to put this actually probably on my chest. It just seems right. Put the other camera in the other spot. Hopefully. We'll see how it goes. But... Alright, so you are now under the amazing beard on my chest there. So, just put something in, lure wise. Nah, I'll just use one of my good ones. Oh well. I'll just grab one of these because I have a ton of these. A D bomb. They were in the some of my favorite pitching lures. Put that on. If you don't know how to Texas rig, something you should know. Let's go through. Boop. Pop her back out. Slide up. Go to your lock. Twist it. Back in. Bam. And then back through, which is something that a lot of people don't do, actually. You and people that fish a lot. If you know, you know. But if you don't know, now you know. Um, so, let's go with that. Now, we're going to grab this camera. We're going to put it out in the back. There. 
first things first. Let's talk about practicing first. Alright. So where you're gonna stand, go here, take a cup, like a coffee cup. This is a plastic really really cool skull cup. <laughs> anyway, go from where you're gonna go. You want about 20 feet. If you have a bigger yard, you can actually do this, and I do this actually sideways too. Kitty corner here, which I'm not gonna do right now. But you go 20, 30, and 50. If you can stretch it, I can't really do 50. That's like to the fence going kitty corner. But anyway, so where you're at, and then just take 10 steps. Right in the heavy grass, it's where you want to be pitching anyway. All right. Now, got it? You're going to go get that out of there. That was weird. But anyway, now, people say go up to your spool there it's the usual thing I actually go a little shorter I like it more to my hook keeper maybe even a little shorter than that you're gonna just hold it exactly how you hold it when you're casting everything take your three front one in the back Hold on to your reel. There you go. But, alright. Here's a big thing. How do you set up your reel for flipping? There's a lot of things that are... There's two trains of thought. It's either set it really loose, and then there's don't change it. Keep it how you keep it when you cast. I actually like to go kind of both uh, or whatever the middle ground of the two I guess so you want your how I said it is well now I'm in now I just caused a mess alright I want it fast on the fall alright I'm on my leader but fast on the fall so I want it fast on the fall it's pretty good eh, you can even go a little looser really just like that real fast on the fall and then your braking, whatever braking system you got, crank that sucker up. I'm sitting at four, four out of six on this one. It's usually pretty good. Put it at five, but it's usually what I go with. Super fast. I want it to fall really fast. But I also, on the back end, I want this to not just be free spooling you know that's when you end up with backlashes and just crazy crap so alright so that's how you set so now you got your your reel your rod your lure everything's all set up the whole motion is pretty simple flip your bail obviously your left hand, you're going to want to put it literally right here. This is, my camera is low, obviously, because of the beard. So, that's pretty much my belly button. A little above. Alright. And I'll do the other shot to show you. <clears throat> but you're going to want to keep it there. 
you know, put your rod down. Pretty much let it hit the ground. All right. And you don't want a pole. You don't want this. It's where you end up with freaking problems. I care, I'll show you. If you pull too tight, actually it wasn't too bad. But <laughs> most of the time, you end up with too much backlash and too much of a whipping motion that is not good for it to go into the water. It actually makes a big old. You don't want that. So you just want to keep it loose and just this motion right here. Whoop. That's it. Alright, so that's all the real simple stuff. Pretty much. I'm going to show you exactly how it goes. Like the motion and everything from afar. Because chest camera actually isn't all that great. But <clears throat> here you go. But you're going to want to keep it on the outside of your wrist because you want this to be higher than your tip there. And if you're constant, if you're like this, you know, and you don't have that big of a range of motion. So you want it outside of your wrist. Ooh, you screw it up. So you keep it like that, it makes it nice and free, just all in the wrist. Alright, I think that's pretty much everything for the actual flipping aspect, which isn't really all that hard, it just takes practice. Like I said, put a cup out there, go after that cup, and it's actually pretty simple. Alright, but there's some tips and tricks that you need to know. To make it land nice and beautiful and how I do that and how I make the bait react so all right let's get into that all right we'll start with this here's my whole flipping motion okay this that I showed you you know I got really long but I got that I flip it out and I stop it with my thumb. See that? I don't know how much you got of that. But let's try it again. Flip it out and stop with your thumb. Hard. Alright. Alright. So show you this. You got the full just the flip. Right, just what I showed you. Just whoop. Now, the next part is really, really key. When you do that, obviously, you're just doing your pitch. Look how big that hits and how bad it spools up my line, right? And if you're on the water, you would notice that that makes a huge splash, which is not what you want. You want to lay it in there gently. So how do you do that? All right. So you got your regular. It's gonna make your pitch, and right before, that's what you're gonna do. See that? I don't know if you guys could see it, but just like that. Like that. That was a 
exaggerated. <laughs> Make your pitch. And then you're going to make your pitch and right before it hits the water pretty much a foot over the water maybe you know what I mean like right before it hits you know you're gonna hit the thumb and down like that it works see that see how much more gently it lands now Here's a big tip. When you're when you pitch and your lure hits water, it's gonna automatically like pendulum this way. Wait, is this on? Yep. It's gonna automatically want to as soon as it hits water to pendulum back towards you that's just physics <laughs> that's just the way it works so you know when you throw it out you have a tight line it's just gonna automatically kind of work its way back in as it's falling in obviously so you always see guys you always see pros and everything they whoo, pitch it out and they're feeding line which is ridiculous all right because often you want the bite on the first fall like as soon as you pitch it in there you're pitching it into a spot where there's a bass or you think there's a bass you want that bite as soon as it hits the water into the fall that's why you're making it quiet you want it to land softly so here's how you get it to fall straight without sitting there and pulling your line out like a flipping moron this is the best way alright you're gonna do your pitch do your stop and as soon as it hits water you're gonna keep it spooled don't flip your bail yet keep it spooled and you're gonna pick up as soon as it hits the water. That was kind of because I already had a bunch of line there. But <clears throat> pitch, hit the water, spool it up, just like that. All right. Now, when you do, once it hits the water. Literally, as soon as it hits water, that's when you're going to want to spool up like that. When you do that, you don't want to go like crazy and go over your head or anything. You want to kind of keep it right there and flip it right away. That's the only problem is that I've found with it is you do want to... Like, well, I that's the only problem that I have found with it is that you do want to flip right away and make sure you're on that bite. Uh, what I found is once you hit that the water and you have that little bit of resistance and you pull it up like that and gives you that that straight fall gives you enough slack to give you a lot more straighter of a fall, a lot better of a fall. But you're gonna want to flip that bill as soon as you do it because yeah they will crush it on the first fall which they should that's what you want that's the big thing all right so you made that first initial pitch you didn't get a bite on that fall what are you gonna do you're gonna especially on a jig and i'm gonna stress this enough fish a jig slow pitch it out there let it sit for a few seconds. They pick jigs off the bottom. They pick creature baits off the bottom. That's the best. That's other than that initial fall. If you're right in front of their face, that's the best time. If you're just kind of blindly casting and stuff, it's for sure the best time. Because even if they're a few feet away, you kind of missed your pitch. 
they'll come in and get it when it's just sitting there really if you got a good bait so what you're gonna do is you are gonna let it fall right you're gonna do all your pitching be prepared for that but if it falls to the ground and it's sitting there on the bottom you're gonna let it sit for a few seconds I like to let it sit for 10 seconds probably like a ways just let it sit take it nice and easy and then what are you gonna do you're just gonna bring it back in heck no you're not I'll show you Boom. Just like that hits the bottom obviously sitting there on the bottom 10 seconds whatever has not hit it you want a semi slack line pretty much a tight line I'll say semi slack though you want that little bit of hoop in it and you're just gonna go boop boop that obviously it's not gonna move like that in the water a derp but poop poop that's what I like to do I don't like to do slow drags I don't like to do shakes this is more realistic because if you see a crawfish which most of the time that's what you're imitating on pitching or most of the time unless it's a bait fish it's a crawfish you're gonna want how they run away from a bass if it's coming up on them is they pop up and swim away get that pop up swim away So, the last simple tip is a roll cast, pretty much. And maybe you know how to roll cast? You probably don't. But it can also be used as a pitching tool. Obviously really good for skipping under things. A uh, time when you really want to need to use it but it also works really good you can actually get the wall or the lure in there really nice and gently with a good old roll cast you want to use this for longer areas or whatever or if you just kind of need to bend around something I'll show you that real quick so a roll cast is actually pretty flippin' simple. You don't need to change anything. Keep your settings exactly how I told you to keep them for pitching. So, and you want to use this on longer distances, or maybe you pitch and then there's something blew up over there, or there's something that you're like, holy crap, that looks good, and you make a pitch there or something over there and you can get a little further and use it it's pretty simple you're gonna want your line about right there I like it about halfway from my keeper to my first eye somewhere around there doesn't happen alright so you have your normal cast right Unless if you cast overhand, I don't know, but which I do sometimes too. Actually, I do a lot of times. Most of it, your cast is there. Obviously, I'm holding back. I'm not gonna sling it to the neighbor's yard, a couple houses down. But um, but you're gonna wanna. It's pretty much you got that right. That's your normal standard cast but what you're going to do is you're going to try to mix everything into one motion okay your normal cast you get your lower end you know oh, there's a spot you know you make your normal cast this is get into a spot be there 
spot that I told you where you're going to want to be. And the simple motion is instead of, you know, when you're trying to bomb a freaking cast out there, try to, you're just going to want to be nice and easy with it. Just kind of, yeah. Pretty simple. You're going to and do like a uh, some nice little hooking motion right in front of you right around like that I know I'm pretty terrible kind of explaining things and all that but I try and try to help you guys because I have a bunch of weird nuances that catch me those big fish and I'm trying to get more into the the tips of how I do it because there are certain things you know people might just think oh you're just going out there and you're just getting lucky or whatever there's no luck in fishing and <laughs> that's and that's the truth. So, just trying to. Ooh, that was a perfect one. But, trying to just kind of teach you guys some weird little nuances that help and things that you can use to go and catch some big old bass. Especially you guys here in Colorado and all that. So, thank you. Click on my logo in the upper left hand corner to subscribe. In the upper right hand corner is the last video I made. In the lower right hand corner there's a video I know you'll enjoy. And make sure to hit that like button down below as well.